sprinkler system in a pool. One of Vegas' finest shows. Vegas has fake everything. Fake Paris, fake thunderstorms. Yeah, but a lot of the fake stuff is cool. That's just, that's like a super lazy attempt at... A thunderstorm? I don't know, I like creating some kind of entertainment. <laughs> Andrew and I have walked these halls at Planet Hollywood so many times. When we first moved to Vegas, like well, this, 12 years this ago. This is how many times we've walked them, is that we walked them when it was the Aladdin. We did? I have, yeah. For oh, sure. man. We used to play 1 2, and they opened a poker room, you know, like 12 years ago, and it was really nice. But there were many happy walks down these halls and many sad walks at 3 a.m. One time I remember one one I, I lost like all my money playing 1 2, and I was super bummed out, and I was completely broke. And I remember sleeping in the truck in the parking garage from like 2 a.m. to like 10 a.m. because I I didn't want to come home because I was like, how am I going to tell Christy? How much do you I think lost you lost? It was probably at least like $600. That's your <laughs> No, I'm serious. It was like a lot of money. You know? I know. That's like three buy-ins. Yeah, and it was like our rent and everything, our, all our bills was probably like 800 you know? Yeah. So I was like just devastated. Well, I mean, actually, it's funny you say 600 because we are on our way to play the $600 buy-in, Goliath. What is it called? The super jacked the up stack? The super jacked up Goliath mega, mega monster, monster blow stack. up. Yeah. So. We're just basically poking fun at all the names of the poker tournaments. They're, they're trying to come up with new words to describe poker tournaments, and it's pretty comical if you read some of the descriptions. <laughs> for you hasn't it when you play in like especially like a Planet Hollywood poker series the dealers for example are so just beginner and they don't really know what they're doing and you have to keep telling them what to do and I think it's a good warm-up I think it's still a good structure and tournament just have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to have some, a little extra patience I think mm -hmm. and the fields are really good how's it going for you <laughs> uh, it's been going all right I have like 15,000 out of 30 I shot up to like 50 pretty early and then I got involved in a big hand that I think was like really, it was like a really good hand for poker, I think. Um, just like real briefly, I four bet with ace king suited in a spot where like, I just thought that uh, taking the lead versus a guy who had 30k and I had 50k and uh, I opened from under the gun plus one, so I, I have a lot of good hands here and decided to four bet it. And then a guy who was cold calling called, original three bet I folded and the board came down, I flopped a royal flush draw ended up making top pair with ace-king, but on the river, uh, it was a spot where the guy shoved all in, I was just like, trying to decide like if I had better hands to call with, but really, like a lot of these guys are just like so passive, you know who they are, like the guys that are like, just calling, trying to see flops, like, they're not really raising, and he just like shoved all in on the river, and I think, I think in a tournament especially, like it's, 
you really need to be careful about calling these like you know really big bets because you can't reload, you can't rebuy. And the cushion that I had, which was almost a double up, 50 out of 30k, is gone. I'm short now. I'm not short, but I, you know, that's another fallacy. Is people are like, oh, I'm short. I have uh, 15k, which is around 75 bigs. Now it's probably like closer to 50. But I mean, that's an insane amount of play. And one lesson I learned too is that you know, in cash games, when you flop a really good hand, the first thing you're thinking of is, can I get all in? <laughs> and can I stack this person? And when you're early in a tournament, we're just so deep. You really just wanna think about getting max value. And instead I was trying to get all in and I shoved huge on the river and I didn't bet big enough on the turn. And when it's for someone's tournament life, they're gonna really, really think about it. They can't reload, like he said. So instead I missed out on a big river bet in a hand where I flopped top two. Um, and then I missed out on that because I was trying to get all in. So I think that's something to take note of because people are just going to fold really... Yeah, but it's also important to note there are people, in, especially like when you say like the field is good, mm -hmm. you know, that means that there are people that are like putting all their money in or a lot of their money in with like really bad hands and don't really know. So you want to be aware of the people that you think like, oh, if this guy has like better than one pair, like he's calling all the time no matter what you know, going for that big like river shove versus those guys when you yeah. have a better hand. So I hear what you're saying. I think it's important to be respectful of people's tournament life because they're going to respect it. But like also understand when you can really, you know, go for the blood. Go for the blood. Go for the blood. Yeah. Okay, we got to go back. All right, we bust out the tournament. No bueno for me. Made a lot of mistakes. Wasn't feeling it today. It's good to get it out of the way in the $600 buy-in though before the World Series starts. But we got the wifey in there still, so I wanted to come and show her some love. You know, most people come and support their wife, and you know, and maybe they're speaking at a conference, or maybe they're, you know, they need the support by watching the kids. No, not me, baby. I'll show you how we support the wife first. First lesson for all you out there is a way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. You gotta know your girl. My girl, the way to her stomach, green juice. We're about to, we're about to sneak up in on her. That's what I got you. What? I got you a green juice. Yay! Did you get the most hardcore one? Yeah, so you know how you're hardcore. <laughs> All right, anyway, I just wanted to drop in and say I love you, love check you. in on you. What's up with this one? It's gotten smaller. Oh. It's supposed to get bigger. Okay, well, you know what to do. All right, now that we got wifey taken care of, I'm about to take you guys on the walk of shame with me right now because I did this walk so many times. I've done this walk so many times. I'm playing my one, two, no limit days. But what we got right here, they got some of my money too at this store. This is the Penguin store right here. I mean, it's pretty dope, actually. I love shopping here. Look at this. Check this out. I mean, look at the look at the logo. It's a freaking penguin. It's gorgeous. <laughs> that came up with this really good player at the table makes it the blinds are 500 a thousand he makes it like 2300 a loose um, recreational player calls in position on the button and I had eight nine of diamonds in the big blind sometimes I would call here but I decided to three bet to see if I could you know get heads up with the loose bad player um, also, sometimes I want to be three betting these hands because, you know, if I'm going to be three betting bluffs and and really good hands, I also want to have some board coverage with like middling cards, and I just really didn't expect to get four bet. But so I made it, um, I made it eight thousand, and the <laughs> the original raiser made it eighteen thousand, and I thought about it for like you know a minute, just thinking, and then all of a sudden I hear clock, clock. We need the floor, and I was like, what? I mean, wait, who? First of all, it has been not very long, and 
who called the clock? And the dealer called the clock on me. The floor came over, I was like, what's happening? And then he just kind of like shook his head, no, you can't do that. And I just like, kind of like kindly told her that only players at the table can call the clock and only after a sufficient amount of time has gone by. I had just tweeted that when you find yourself in a tournament and the dealers are really bad, getting mad at them and being an asshole doesn't make them better. You can, of course, communicate your expectations to the floor, but responsibly, like, while you're there, just make sure you count your chips, make sure you are there for the color-ups, and also you have a choice whether to play there or not anymore. Balls. Okay. Update. Oh, just double this guy up. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> sorry. No, it's just a race. That's how poker works. All right. We're back at it. We're creeping in on her. I don't think she oh. knows that we're here. What's she doing? Oh, give me some. I'm so hungry. You guys almost done? One more level. One more level. One more level. I think she's all in right now. She's all her chips are in the middle. What are you gonna do? She's thinking right now. Christy's all in. Looks like she folded. Probably a good result for us. Yellow copies going in the bag. White copy goes to the other one. What do you mean? Before you made it through and I didn't. <laughs> That's true. Do you think you're better than me? <laughs> <laughs> well, Is that where we're gonna good luck tomorrow. Thank you. We are driving in Planet Hollywood because he's gonna give it a second bullet to try to play day two with me. Obviously, like, I wanna make day two anyway, but I think <laughs> it would be even more fun doing it with you. Yeah. Cool. Cool. down to the strip day two I got uber Andrew I'm uber Andrew because I didn't make day two so I will be your chauffeur today <laughs> I'm coming in with a short stack I'm getting like a pep talk it's uber Andrew but like pep talk poker coaching talk like, all I get to do today is to make the best decisions I possibly can right babe yeah along with that I I think the other thing you have going for you is that this is a really soft field and a lot of the people in these tournaments in this tournament and I played it like all day yesterday, they are gonna be making really big mistakes. And you've done a lot of study work, you're you're well prepared, so just trust that you're gonna make good decisions. Let the chips fall where they may, as they say. <laughs> Wait, what about Mike Sexton? May your cards be love and your, your chip your pots be, be monstrous. monstrous. Word up to Mike Sexton. Shout out to Mike Sexton. Shout out to Mike Sexton, who's moving on for the WPT. You have been an amazing staple, like idol hero in poker. And I can't wait to see what you do playing more or whatever it is after WPT. All right, day two, let's go. <laughs>
jumpy because I busted, but is that not the dumbest thing you've ever seen? 